friends, welcome back to our Japan series. My name is Juliet and I'm here in Kyoto with my husband Michael. Come with us as we explore this beautiful and charming city and look for things to eat. Michael. After coming out of the Arashiyama forest, there are cute shopping areas that sell souvenirs and snacks. We go and check one of them out and come across a shop that sells waffles on a stick. The matcha green tea waffle caught my eye so we stopped to try it but it basically tastes like how it sounds. It was a little bitter from the matcha powder, but that's to be expected. But yeah, it tastes like waffle on a stick. This town is so cute, but be careful coming here though. These shops have so many adorable things, I wanted to buy everything. Next, we go to dinner at Moritaya Kiyamachi. The hotel that we're staying at actually suggested this restaurant and made reservations for us and it did not disappoint. This place was established in 1896 and it specializes in sukiyaki, but they also have shabu shabu and other foods that you cook over a hot griddle. We chose the 8100 yen set of sukiyaki, which was absolutely friggin' delicious. Not only do you have your own private room with a gorgeous garden view, but they also cook the food right in front of you. They started us off with some appetizers, and here we had the beef flakes, ankimo, which is a monkfish liver, and a potato tofu. Everything was delicate, light, and intentional. Finally, the main course. They cook everything for you, in front of you, and it's kind of like a dinner and a show. I also have to add, and it might seem trivial, but I really appreciated that our server even removed the white squigglies from the raw egg. Talk about attention to detail. Then she prepares a hot pan with butter and a sprinkling of sugar so that when she lays down the meat, it'll caramelize and make delicious crusties. Then you dip the meat into the egg mix and spend the rest of the meal wondering when you'll get to enjoy such a deliciousness again. Lastly, we got fruits for desserts, and I know it may not look like much, which is what I was thinking at the time, but that honeydew is the best melon I have ever eaten. It literally melts in your mouth and I still dream about it from time to time. Then it's dinner time and we were craving soba, so we went to Soba Nomi Yoshimura. They make everything from scratch, so right as you enter, you can see them making the noodles. The best part is when they hand cut the noodles. I can't help but be in awe of the steadiness and precision required. I ordered the cold tempura soba and Michael got the hot tempura soba. I think the cold soba was better though because Michael's noodles continued to cook in the hot broth and basically became soggy by the time he ate it. If I have to be honest though, this was not the best soba noodles I've had, but if it was close by and nothing else better was open, I would come back. The Nishiki Market is a narrow shopping street that carries all things food related such as seafood, knives, and cookware. If you come here to eat, make sure you don't eat and walk at the same time though because it's considered bad manners. Intimidating. This is the kind of Wanna just get one and share it? Yeah. One of the foods that Kyoto is known for is their tofu, so we stopped to get a deep fried soybean milk cream, which is what they named it, but it's basically deep fried tofu. It was nice and crispy and not very strong in flavor, but it was really good. Then Michael got a piece of hot tofu, which was soft and silky and came with a little bit of grated ginger and bonito flakes, which are common toppings for tofu. Then as we walked further down, we saw a row of shallow pans and yellow goodness and knew we had to stop for some tamagoyaki. Tamagoyaki is kind of a rolled up Japanese omelette with delicate layers of egg. Top it off with some soy sauce and it's a perfect snack. Then we tried shirako, which directly translates to white children. I'll give you a second to guess what it is. Yes, you're right. It's cod sperm. It's considered a delicacy in Japan and thought to promote anti-aging. It's creamy. And it was a little too fishy for me, so it wasn't my cup of tea, but Michael enjoyed it. Wait, There's something amazing about grilled little birds. The way their skin gets crispy and caramelized. These are grilled sparrows glazed with sweet soy. They also had grilled inagi on a stick. Later, we saw crab legs and baby octopus, so we ordered both. The baby octopus is marinated, which gives it the red color, and even had quail eggs stuffed in its head. Pretty macabre when you think about it, but it was delicious. Julia was curious how the egg magically appeared in its head. It was inserted through its anus. 
the anus has served an important role in transporting goods throughout the years. In this case, it was an egg. In the California penal system, it's weapons, drugs, and cell phones. We thought the crab leg was actually real Alaskan crab meat, but it actually tasted more like imitation Alaskan crab meat. We were a little bit disappointed upon a closer look, but I was pleasantly surprised by its delicate, sweet, and savoriness, especially when dipped in mayonnaise. Savory in the mayo. Yeah, and the char. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I am getting full. Cool. Oh, I'm getting full too. Another thing Kyoto is known for is their kaiseki restaurants. We stayed at the Dozen Ryokan, and we were able to reserve a kaiseki dinner with the owner and master chef of this establishment. And for those who don't know, a ryokan is a small traditional hotel with tatami-covered floors. And a kaiseki is a multi-course Japanese dinner. It's considered Japanese fine dining, so it's not cheap. But if you can, it's definitely worth a try. All the ingredients are always fresh from the current season and are prepared in small portions and carefully balances taste, texture, appearance, and colors. This was my first time having a kaiseki dinner in Kyoto, and I certainly won't be the last. The current chef and owner actually began as an apprentice to the former chef and owner. By tradition, you're supposed to pass on the torch to your own kids, but the former chef never had any children, so not only did he make the current chef his successor, he also passed on his name to him, who he had no relation to, which is a huge honor in Japanese culture. At the end of the meal, he even handed us a handwritten paper full of notes and little drawings about the seasons and holidays and which foods are important to each event. It was such a thoughtful and personal end to an incredible artistic dining experience. This place is an amazing hidden gem and I definitely recommend it. The following morning, they provide a simple Japanese breakfast complete with tamago kake gohan. Some people might think it's crazy to eat raw egg like this, but it's actually a really popular breakfast item in Japan. The hot rice cooks the egg just slightly, and after adding a little soy sauce, it becomes a simple and satisfying meal. Before heading off to the airport, we stopped for curry at Koko Ijibanya. It's a chain restaurant and we have a location in LA already, but it was a cold day and curry sounded warm and inviting and it's a great value for the food too. The beef curry with the uh, katsu and a egg. Is that not soft the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? There's like the barely job. any egg white. Yeah. The yolk is gigantic. <laughs> but and then you know. the radishes are usually red in LA, but I guess they didn't put dye in it. Anyway, this place is cool because you can customize it however you like. You can even add eggplant and corn. Oh, who would add eggplant though? Vegetarians. Sorry. You can add spinach and cheese. Ah, I feel like it's going to dilute the curry though, but... It's like cooked enough where it's not ready. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Yeah. Right. This. Yep, that was super bomb. Definitely better than the one in LA. <laughs> Way more toppings. Stay tuned and follow us as we continue to explore Kyoto. It would really help our channel if you could give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you enjoyed coming along with us today, it would be super duper cool if you could click that subscribe button too. Thanks and see you soon. Oh fuck, I'm drunk. Stop it, stop it. Eat a burger.